Right. Welcome to the world of Python on hardware. Yay, Blinka! Okay. What's going on this week? There's a lot going on. Yeah. This week, Python snakes its way to the SparkFun Spark Mini. Sam D21 mm-hmm. Mini. That's right. And uh, this is a kind of like a, it's bigger than a trinket, it's maybe about yeah. like it's a bitsy size, and it's from SparkFun. They've made a bunch of cool Sam D21 based boards. Um, this is their kind of their cute little one, it's kind of like a pro mini, but with a Sam D. And um, Sean Heimel, uh, who's been working with us to um, make variant forks for all of the different Sam D21 boards out there, uh, pushed up the definition and tutorial on how to get this board working with CircuitPython. So maybe yep. you have one, want to try it with CircuitPython, it's easy to get started. Check out the guide. All right, and uh, big milestone, we hit 10,000 members, humans, humans, on Discord. So if you want to go to adafruit.it <laughs> slash Discord or discord.gg slash adafruit, we are there. Um, special thanks to, uh, let me make, I, I screenshotted it right when it happened. Yeah. It was um, Indian. E-N-D-I-N. Indian was the 10,000th? Was the 10,000th person. Wow, it really it, Well, that changes because, you know, people come and people go. Yeah. But uh, that's 10,000 people. And uh, the reason why it's so successful because of all of you. Um, code plus community. It's one of the um, things that we decided to do. We build our products out in the open. Discord's a place where people help each other and share. And we try to keep it um, a great, safe place for everyone to join. So thanks for making it a cool place. And don't forget, um, we answer questions at the end of this show live. Um, go there as soon as you can. We also uh, wrapped up the Code Plus Community Circuit Python 2019 mm-hmm. post, so um, you can always send something in. You can look for the post, but um, we got a lot of good feedback, and we wanted to know what you wanted to see in Circuit Python in 2019. So thank you, everyone who sent that in, and we have all the blog posts up and more. Um, this is kind of neat. Timothy is uh, going to school for design and worked on this um, it's like a final project. fictional magazine, yeah. which um, is a... V- but is it fictitious? Is it? Yeah. Um, this was the World of Circuit Python, so it was a beautiful layout and design, and uh, Timothy wrote in, and he's like, it was great, because you have all your photos, all your images, everything up, and I was able to complete this um, magazine design project um, because of all the resources Adafruit puts out Look there. Look how cool Blinka looks. Yeah, it's cool. Got Dan, Scott, Katney. Yeah. Um, over on Embedded FM, they mentioned Circuit Python. We put that um, in the newsletter. Um, Listen to that broadcast, um, not only for Circuit Python, but uh, for all the good content that's in there. And then um, this one you wanted to talk about. It's a um, LCD. These are yes. Yeah. This is the TFT updating with Circuit Python. This is Scott's code that he's been working on to um, write display code for uh, display support code for Circuit Python. And he took some slow mo videos, so I think not this one. Yeah, you'll see it in just a you'll second. You'll see it. You can see like the Here refresh comes. rate. Watch it all like. Whoosh, yeah, it's right cool. Across the screen. Boom! Yeah. See that? So that's actually the slow mo of the display itself updating um, when we write to it. So it actually like you can see the chunks of uh, uh, TFT itself updating. Um, that's not like us writing the like, we write all of it at once, but then only chunks of it update at a time as um, the refresh occurs. So you can see that refresh effect. So very yeah, neat. So I'll be posting this up um, later with more information, but that, that's hot off the press that came in today. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a neat circuit Python powered 24 hour clock. Okay. You can see it go back and forth. We have uh, links to that project and more. Huh. So it like, uses a servo and it yeah, starts it from over. zero to... Yeah, it's okay. cool. And then this is from Sophie. This is a preview for her next uh, Hackspace magazine project. Look at this great with, photo. With um, circuit Python. She can write better in light than I can with a pen. <laughs> um, this is kind of neat, um, kind of a sign of the times. I'm going to play the video. Because the the national parks are closed, someone made a soundboard. With of the national parks. Of <laughs> national parks with all the bird sounds and stuff. So I'm going to just uh, play this. Um, it's, uh, it's an interesting time that we're in right now. Um, at least okay. you can build something. Let's hear some nature. A cool grid display. This uses Circuit Python. Oh, it looks like it's got a trinket and some yeah. dot stars, and they're just slowly filling them up with colors. Looks cute. I love this old display. Look at those little pixels. 
here's another project. I think this is it's from a clock, Geek and it's got Geek like edge lit. Yeah, you can see yeah. the edge lit LED. So it's like it's a Lixi kind of display. Yep. So that's, that's cool. cool. Um, this is uh, this is a full. Um, it's a pretty long video, so we just have a link to it. Um, Raspberry Pi plus Adafruit Cricket Hat equals robotic friend. Use how to uh, learn how to use Circuit Python to easily build robots. JP has an updated guide. Speaking so. of robots, this yeah. is a robot with a Feather M4 on a Cricket. Um, so it takes advantage of the speaker and the sensor inputs and uh, the motor control to make a disk sequencer. So as that disk flips around, four uh, light sensors detect the black squares and play an audio clip. So it's like a little rotating beat machine. And then you just fill in uh, the rectangles that you want to play audio. And uh, Hackaday posted up this. It was on Hackaday IO, also on our Learn system. It is a IDE for Android for writing Circuit Python. Um, we also have a, a new project, and we put this in. This is when we just had one skull, and uh, when we built this, we shot a short video. It's a that was me. I sculled it. Yeah, it's an <laughs> IoT device that uses Circuit Python M4 ESP32. So um, here's past us talking about it, and uh, we'll show you it live um, after uh, after the video. What is this? This is a uh, Circuit Python powered display with an ESP32 wired up to it. So this is the ESP32 module breakout. This is a uh, 240 by 320 TFT display. And it's on this PCB here with a Cortex M4. This is the SAMD51 SD card, some extras. And then I just hand wired the ESP32 right now. Yeah, that's the module I'm going to solder on. And this connects to Hackaday IO and fetches the number of skulls for this project, which happens to be this project. Yeah. So I can show you the schematic real fast. This is this is the uh, SAMD51 ESP module. Uh, you got USB here, and it's running CircuitPython. And then there's a display in the back. And then here's the project. It has one like right yeah. now. Oh, people should go and like this project. Yeah. But if you go back here, you'll see there's one like. Yeah. And this is connecting over the ESP32 using AT commands and um, fetching the data from Hackett. You saw I just got the data, parsed out the JSON, and the value is one. One like. So this Needs is using the Hackett AIO API. That's right. Connecting over CircuitPython with an ESP32 friend. Okay. One skull. Okay, well that was when we first started a project. Since then... This is live. Yeah. You have 39 skulls. You're chat. just You're one skull away from 40. Yeah. And two people started the repo. This was at 7.62 and not 7.64. So this is our uh, CircuitPython GitHub repo. We'd love to get to 1,000. Go, if you haven't started it yet, go check out the Adafruit uh, GitHub repo, github.com yeah. slash Adafruit slash CircuitPython, and give us a star, and then this will go up. And the higher the number, the more of the internet that we win. That's the rules. We just want yeah. to, we just well, want we're to also win. testing all this stuff. We're so I just put the links in the chat if uh, you're logged into Hackaday.io or if you're uh, logged into your GitHub account. Um, we'll stop back later and see how these are yes. going. Um, but the URLs are on the screens there. We also put those in the chat. Good. Move them right along. Um, this is a really neat Stemma interface. It's a Stemma MIDI Yeah, this goes setup. with the uh, Neo Trellis. Yeah. This we'll is there. the... Um, so the Octo, Octopus badge, and it's now working with the NRF52840. Yeah. And what's cool is all the sensors on there. You can see there's like a um, infrared grid uh, sensor. Well, we already have drivers for that in Circuit Python, so you could use this badge in Circuit Python with Bluetooth. This is in our store now, but it's worth mentioning that this is the Pi Board color LCD skin with resistive touch, and it looks like and it's going to work with the Pi Board Yes, D. see, it's got those new, those new rectangular connectors in the center. Very suspicious. What was up with that? So I, I looked, and it seems to me that I, I have no proof, but this is my my investigative reporting that that plugs into the new generation of the Pi Board that's coming out soon. Yeah. So this was updated ahead of time. Let's see breaking news. Let's see oh, breaking news! Know. Breaking news! Sorry, got to forty. Got to forty skulls. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, back to you. Go, go to the GitHub repo and start. Okay, we're going to keep going. We've just got more to do. Back to you. Okay, um, update. This is still making the rounds. Oshpark posted up GrowGuard's giant board, which runs Linux in the form factor of Adafruit Feather. And we merged in the CircuitPython library support into Adafruit Blinka, so this can now yeah. work with all of our CircuitPython libraries. How many libraries do we have again? 125? At least 125. At least. Okay, um, we previewed the Feather E, um, Featherwing. 
should that. Yeah, coming soon. Talked about it last week. Um, we have some photos floating around, but you'll be able to do well, e ink. Have PCBs, I can grab them. Yeah. So it's a, it, we're going to have some more e ink in the store, and this is a two point one three inch e ink display, feather wing. It's got some mounting holes. You can plug the yeah. feather into the back. So that's coming to the Python on hardware enthusiasts out there. Um, Nordic, thanks again. They uh, gave me a little bit of an update. They updated their logo, so we updated the poster. This is coming soon. This is our launch poster for Circuit Python Four. When we launch, we'll be um, giving away some of these posters, and also you'll be able to pick one up. Um, also, Invent to Learn. I bought the first edition, and I just bought the second edition. There's twenty-five oh. percent more stuff in there. Um, Gary's on Twitter a lot, and we saw that um, he's now included um, Circuit Playground, Make Code, and uh, more. So uh, pick it up if you haven't. It's a good resource for people who want to teach physical computing, or learn. learning, <laughs> um, making tinkering, tinkering, and engineering in the classroom. Um, some Moo news. Happy Moo Year! Happy um, Moo Year! Yeah, uh, the new version of Moo's out. 1.0.2. Yeah. Um, a couple things that, well, there's a bug fix, of course, there's some micro, uh, bit, micro Python stuff. We've also um, added more Circuit Python boards. We've also added in a generic, like, catch all, like, wildcard for yeah, all Circuit Python boards. ID. Um, we have a mode that lets you work with um, the argon, boron, and xenon as well. Yeah, so you can now also, yeah, if you're installing Circuit Python on particle boards, you can also use that as well. So check that out. Code with dot moo. It's one of the best editors out there. Um, also, um, I wanted to ask you about this graph so you can explain to folks. It's kind of neat. Um, well, okay, first off, let's look at this beautiful graph. Yeah, this is great. This is, yay, and we're, do, we're doing this together. Best pals. And uh, we were They both don't have fingers. Yeah, we were talking to, well, you don't have fingers. Um, so we were talking to the folks at Raspberry Pi, Ben, and we got this neat graph. This yes. is kind of cool because we started doing a lot of work to make it easy to run CircuitPython on all sorts of devices, and yes. it looks like it's working out. Yes, and not only do we have CircuitPython running, of course, on microcontrollers like the SAMD21 and the NR52840 in frames, but we also have CircuitPython library support for Linux, and it's something that we spent a lot of time the last uh, couple months on. Um, and here's a graph um, from PyWheels, which is the PyPI mirror site for Raspberry Pi that pre-compiles a lot of stuff, just makes it easier for people with Raspberry Pi boards to pip. When they pip install, it'll go through PyWheels. That's new in Stretch. And so um, one thing that you'll notice here is that um, starting around May, we started um, updating all of our guides and um, testing all our drivers on Raspberry Pi computers. And so we got a lot more content out there to let people know that they can use our CircuitPython libraries on Raspberry Pi. And so you can see in April, um, the number of people downloading, well, first Blinka appears and um, Blinka starts taking off. And within a you know, month or two, already overtakes Adafruit GPIO, which is our previous library for doing uh, GPIO support on um, Linux boards. And then at the top, you know, these are actually not cumulative, by the way. This is month to month. Yeah. So it's it's increasing, and it's actually like that many per month, not just like total number. And at the end there, you see that red line drop a little bit um, for GPIO. That's because we we removed the um, we've deprecated we're deprecating that library, and we've removed that dependency, and we're now using a different platform detection library instead. Um, so um, more and more, I mean, like this is just the start. Only a couple yeah. months. Of so having really happy with the progress on Blinka, this. and Blinka's working out. And uh, breaking news: 127 libraries. Thank you, Katni, for that. 127. For our, our roving reporter. Um, we're up to 48. 48. And, 770. and 770. Oh All goodness! Right, so this is really working. This is working. Thank you for helping us test this. 48 okay. skulls. Yeah. 770 stars. Getting there. Okay. Um, we're know. still on the lookout for more people to help us translate the messages from Circuit Python. You can check out our blog post some more. PyCon, that's the event that's coming up in May. We'll probably be doing something pretty cool there. And uh, the awesome list, keeping it updated. You can get all this and go to adafruitdaily.com, sign up for Python on microcontrollers. That is our this Python news for the week. There's a lot going on. Sweet. Okay. 